Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we're gonna be diving into what happened to the members of the old gang after you beat Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, I've done sort of a part one to this video, but I've actually discovered new information that reveals clues and details to what happens of members of the gang that we hadn't heard before yet. So if you wanna catch up on part one, I'll leave a link to that in the description. Anyways, let's start with Pearson. So I don't know how many of you guys watch the credits of Red Dead Redemption 2. It's probably not as many as you think because the credits I think are like 37 minutes long. It's something insane like that. But throughout the credits, you actually see members of the old gang and what they're about to do in the epilogue. And one person you see is Pearson. It looks like Pearson now lives in Lemoyne and is operating the general store at Rhodes. So he went from the butcher's table to the general store. And you can also see he puts a photo of the old gang on the wall. Now what's interesting is you can visit Pearson about four times and he will give you tons of information on what he's been doing and his life after the gang. Take a listen to this. John Marston? I don't believe it! I thought you were dead! Pearson, what are you doing here? Uh, <laughs> welcome to my store. How can I help you? <laughs> are you serious? Yeah! Beats the old butcher's table, doesn't it? <laughs> so what can I get for you today, sir? How the hell are you? Pretty good. Got some land in Great Plains. Trying to get a small ranch going. Really? Wow, good for you. Staying out of trouble then? I wouldn't go that far, but I'm trying. This sure has brought the memories flooding back. Not all of them good. <laughs> Too many federals coming through. I got some horses. John, nice to see you again. How have you been? Not bad. You? Oh, very well. So, I, I meant to ask last time. Are Abigail and Jack, uh, okay? You're still with them? Yeah, yeah, they're doing fine. Jack's nearly a young man now. Oh, good. Good, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad. He always liked those two. Anyway, what can I do you for? Hey! Who are you talking to? Just an old friend! Well, have you kind of those shells? Yes, dear. Who's that? That's my wife, Ethel. A wonderful woman. Changed my life. I just feel like I was a different person back then. Or a different Pearson, you might say. <laughs> huh? Hey! Hey! Mr. Marston, I was wondering if you'd be back. How you been? No, oh, ticking along. Where is it your base now again? I was, uh, thinking I might send you a letter. Some things I wouldn't want Ethel to, uh, overhear. Uh, it's a place called Beecher's Hope in Great Plains, West Elizabeth. Okay, good, good. So, what can I help you with today? Yes, dear. Okay, I'll make a fresh pot for you. I just have a customer right now. I love that woman. You know, before her, I was married briefly to a lady called Michelle. But she was an absolute nightmare. Oh, seems you've landed on your feet this time. You know, sometimes people here still talk about the brutal demise of the Greys and Braithwaites. I just smile and keep quiet. Jim's pocket the other day. Hey, you're back. How are things? Not too bad. I have to ask. Do you still see any of the others? I left when things... Well, you know how it was. I heard about Arthur. Yeah, that didn't end well. I'm in touch with some of them. Uncle, Charles, Sadie. Really? Well, please send my regards, even to Mrs. Adler. And Dutch? Is he, uh... Even alive? I don't know. If he is, I sure hope I never lay eyes on him again. 
sad how it all turned out. Anyway, no point dwelling on it now, is there? What can I help you with today? So, here we are. Is that him again? Him? He just popped in to say hello. Of course, dear! <sighs> I overdid it on the rum. I told her more than I should. Sorry, dear! You're a fair way out from the Great Plains over this way. Wow, so that was a lot of details right there. Now, getting sort of the obvious stuff out of the way, Pearson obviously runs the uh, Rhodes General Store, which is pretty cool. But he's also married. That's right, Pearson married. He had one wife named Meredith, who he disliked, and now he has a wife named Ethel, and apparently she lives upstairs because there's a couple times when you actually talk to Pearson that she will sort of like interrupt inside of your conversation and start talking to Pearson as well. So that is really cool and very wholesome too. It seems like Pearson has moved on from the life of the gang quite well and uh, is now settled down and is married. But he does have a constant reminder on his wall that the gang is always there with him. And I do think that's pretty cool that he put that photo up right there. Now, he also said that he was going to send us a letter. And you actually heard that in the dialogue. And in the epilogue, you get letters at Beecher's Hope. And in fact, in the in-game strategy guide, there is a specific letter from Mr. Pearson that you get in the epilogue. However, I did all the encounters with Mr. Pearson. And I swear to you guys, I did nothing for half an hour but sleep look around for the letter, sleep, look around for the letter, repeat that over and over and over again. I could not find the letter from Pearson. So if you have received the letter from Pearson and you know where it is in the epilogue, either let me know in the comments down below or reach out to me on Twitter because I could not find this and it was so frustrating knowing that it's apparently something in the epilogue, but I couldn't find it, and that was just really frustrating. So I think either a couple things happened here. Number one, the letter is glitched, where it's just not showing up for me, which if that's the case, that's kind of unfortunate. Or number two, I just haven't waited a long enough time, but I've literally simulated like a month in game, and I have done all the encounters with Pearson, so I'm not really too sure how much more I could actually do. The next person we can see is Tilly Jackson, and you actually see her in San Denis walking with her baby and her new husband, which is really cool. So she actually explains that uh, she has settled down, uh, she's married, she lives in a big house now, and what's kind of cool is after you visit her, she'll actually send you a letter to Beecher's Hope, and you can read the letter, and it gives her a ton more details on her life and the rest of the gang. It's titled, Letter from Tilly. Dear Abigail and John, I hope you're both well. It's me, Tilly, Tilly Jackson, as I was, and Tilly Pierre, as I now am. I am a married woman, and more than that, I am a mother. I have given birth to a beautiful little girl, and so far, she's doing well. My husband is a lawyer from Haiti, and I live in a fancy house in town. I'm very genteel, and we have servants. How you would laugh at me if you could see me. I feel like the biggest fraud alive, but my husband, who is a very understanding man, tells me that everyone is a fraud and that we are all the same underneath, and I know he speaks the truth. I miss you both, and I was happy to learn that you are well, and I hope Jack is too. He must be so big by now. I miss him, and I think it was the time I spent being an aunt to him that made me want to be a mother myself. You are quite right, Abigail. It's the greatest feeling alive. In spite of my happy life and immense good fortune, a part of me misses the old days, something rotten. Silly old Grimshaw and angry Mr. Pearson and kindly Hosea, who was like a father to me, and you both and poor dear Arthur and all them bastards, and Karen, who was a sister to me and who I miss every day. I never heard what happened to her, but deep down, I know the drink did for her. I still see my darling Mary Beth, who is now a lady novelist, which both surprised me and did not surprise me at all, if that makes any sense. I just wanted to share my happy news with you, for you are my family, only one I really got aside from my husband and baby girl, 
yours, Tilly. Wow, so that reveals a lot of information right there. We, of course, knew that she was married and that she was having a baby, but we get some background on her husband. Her name is now Tilly Pierre instead of Tilly Jackson. She lives in a big house in Saint Denis with servants. But we also find out what happened to Karen because we sort of don't know where she went after chapter six. We don't hear from her. Uh, there isn't any things written about her. I think one can assume from this letter from Tilly that she ended up either dying or went away based off of her alcohol addiction because that was something that really became prevalent throughout the later chapter. She was just constantly lounging around and drinking. And I think that's what Tilly was trying to tell us there, that uh, ultimately it was the drink that did in Karen. Now, in that same article, she also brought up Mary Beth. And Mary Beth is a lady novelist now. We can actually see this in the credit cutscenes as well, where she's actually like sitting at a desk writing, uh, which is kind of cool. And that's the only time we, of course, see her in the uh, credit cutscenes. And her author name for writing books is like Leslie DuPont or something like that. And she actually gives us a book to keep. It's called like The Lady and the Manor, which is kind of interesting. Now, I'm not going to bore you guys with reading the entire thing, but essentially it's like a romance uh, novel that she actually gives us, which again, if you're interested in that, you can read it for yourself. We only get like one chapter, but it is pretty cool. And now we know that uh, she is writing books and you can actually find this book on your bookshelf at Beecher's Hope too, which is kind of cool. And the last character today in which we get some insight in is Rain's Fall. So we know that him and his family or his tribe now lives in Canada. But for whatever reason, he is returned to Roanoke Ridge, where his tribe used to be. Well, in the credits of the game, you actually see him on top of a mountain. And what's interesting is an eagle flies above his head, which I think that eagle is supposed to represent his son. His son's name is Eagle Flies. And as you guys know, Eagle Flies actually dies in Red Dead Redemption 2. So I think that this is Rains Falls returning to Roanoke Ridge to grieve the loss of his son seven or eight years later. But anyways, that right there is what has happened to the gang after Red Dead Redemption 2, sort of the secret ending that you might not have known about, and some more details gathered that you can get from interacting with the old gang members. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if you do want to watch those cutscenes with Tilly or Mary Beth or Rain's Fall uh, in their full detail, I'll leave a link to a video I did maybe about a month ago in the description. I just didn't realize how much more extra stuff there was, which is really cool. But like I said, that's all I've got for you guys in this video today. Hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to leave a like rating on this video. That'd be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.